Happy New Year, and welcome to the St. Matthew UCC Church in Wheaton's online service. My name is Lisa Curta, and we're very happy to have you watching with us today. Some announcements we'd like to bring to your attention. Next Sunday, January 10th, our services will be live streamed at 9.30 a.m. Any future viewings can be seen on our YouTube channel. Also next Sunday is our Remembrance Sunday, where we will honor those in our church who have passed away by lighting a candle in their honor. We hope this will be a healing service for those who have lost a loved one. And if you would like to have a name remembered, please contact the office and we can include them in our virtual service. We will also offer prayers to all of those who have lost lives or lost a loved one to COVID-19. Our country and the world has suffered through this virus and we will take this opportunity to pray for those lost and for hope for the future. This is also a time that we want to give thanks to God for the lives of those have touched our own. As we say with our United Church of Christ churches, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome and accepted here at St. Matthew. Thank you and enjoy the service. Oh 
Christ to you from whom they spring. I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, our lives are restless until we find our rest in you. Open our eyes that we may see the miracle that we are your beloved children, that we can always find our home with you, and that we may radiate the love of your light into the darkness around us. Amen. Hello there. Happy New Year. Today's scripture reading is taken from St. John, chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. The Word of God for the people of God. Hi boys and girls. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Remember, Oh, a couple weeks ago when we had our carol sing at church. That was so much fun and it was so great to see so many of you there. The carol sing started after it had become dark and that's why we passed out candles to help light the darkness. So you could hold your candle and sing and it would help you read your music. I have this picture here. It's of Mikey, Olivia, and Evelyn. They're sitting in the back of their car. And even though the dark was so big, this little light in the car and their candles filled the back of their car with light so I could see them there and take their picture. Another picture I have here is of my granddaughter Kennedy and myself and we're holding our candles and we're using the candles to read the words on the caroling song sheet. We could not have we could have not have sung all those verses if we didn't have the candles to light the darkness and light the words. When I think of God sending Jesus to earth, I think of how Jesus was the light in the world. In many ways, the world had become a dark place, meaning some bad things were happening. People were doing things that were not pleasing to God. They were sinning. And worst of all, they were not putting God first in their life. Some of the people didn't even really understand who God was. But God sent his son to earth and his son 
then spent his life teaching us about God and about how to live our life. Jesus was the light in the world. When Jesus was all done doing his work, God brought him back home. He died and he went back to heaven. So did he take that light with him? No, he left that light behind to live on in people like you and me, people that believe in him and believe that he is the son of God. So the light in us is not in us just to stay hidden. The light in us is meant to shine through us and to go out into the world where we can shine our light doing good things, kind things for other people, where we can show love and where we put God first in our life. We are the light in the world for Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending him to be the light in our world. Thank you that now we are given that light that is meant to shine through us into the world. We pray that you will help us every day to take the light of Christ and shine it into the world by being kind and good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy New Year's New Year, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Seems like every year before Christmas, we uh, start to complain about how much Christmas music we're hearing far too early. Uh, we see decorations going up in the stores and signs and Christmas ads happening. Uh, I was reading the Christian Century uh, this past week, and I was reading an article in there by a woman named Heidi uh, Havenkamp. Uh, she said she had a cousin down in Dallas, Texas, and that cousin put up her Christmas decorations in October 7th. Can you imagine October 7th having the Christmas decorations up? About the only thing I think, think that would be earlier than that would be those folks who never take their Christmas decorations down and keep them up year round. So it's very convenient when you do that, right? Well, uh, maybe there's a reason people have done that. Heidi says in the article that this year that people are tending to put their Christmas decorations up earlier than ever before. She says that maybe, maybe it's because that we just need to have something to do. We need to keep ourselves busy now that we can't get out and do a lot of things that we're used to doing. Maybe that has something to do with it. I just know that uh, I find that my family, we've been doing a lot of new projects. A lot of things to keep us occupied in this time when we're home more than we're normally home. Uh, I was thinking about uh, one of our number. One of our number uh, decided that, uh, that, that it was time to watch all 16 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. And it was pulled off in about two months' time. Well, we also found ourselves in the family deciding that we would create some Christmas decorations by hand. Uh, Luke and I uh, put together a squirrel table, these little squirrel tables that you can feed squirrels on. Not that the squirrels in our yard particularly need feeding. It looks like they've been feasting many holiday seasons to me. But it was fun making. Kira has found herself working with balls of fluffy, bright colored yarn, turning out wonderfully colored, colorful blankets that she's been giving as gifts. She reminded me a bit of Penelope and the Odyssey, waiting for Ulysses. You know that scene in the old book? That scene where uh, she keeps waiting for him finally to come home. It feels like we're doing a lot of waiting like that this year's ourself. Maybe Christmas has a time for us to get those decorations out as a way of keeping ourselves busy. But Heidi also says something else in her article. She says Christmas decoration is a way that we've been trying to chase away the gloom. To put them out, she says, 
as a bulkward against the gloom, whether that gloom be the shortened days of wintertime coming or the chaos of the news or the loneliness of the ongoing social distancing. This year, she says, decorations feel like an act of resistance, a resistance against the gloom. Now, I rather like that idea. I never thought about Christmas decorations being an act against the resistance. I just know that in this time, in these days, I've certainly been wanting to rebel against this awful darkness and gloom that we've been experiencing. I feel out of control, like there's not much I can do about much I see going on in the world. And I'd like to get a little bit of control back in. And maybe if I can put the Christmas decorations out, as we did this year, about a week early, it was a way of seeing, sensing I had some sense of control. But this year we also did something else when we put the decorations that we hadn't done before are done very well. Marla and I both like those candles that are put on windows, those very simple candles put on each window of a house, you know? This year I went out to Home Depot, tried it last year, it didn't work so well. Last year I picked out some candles like that and you had to put the battery in every day, take it out, well, you know how long that lasted. This year I went back and I found some candles from Home Depot that you put the battery in, if it's daytime they don't come on. You put them in the window and the encroachment of darkness, darkness comes, and when it gets dark, those candles light up. Almost as if they're sentries or soldiers standing watch by night to stand against the coming of the darkness. And being there all night long until they're re relieved in the morning by the sun, bringing its full brightness to the darkness and overcoming it completely. That's what it feels like when you put that candle out. As if one single candle can do so much to cut the darkness of the world. You know, we've been doing a lot of that this Christmas season. We did that on Christmas Eve. I know many of us are very disappointed. We couldn't be in the sanctuary and gather with the families that have come in from out of town and gather for our church family and to pass those candle lights from one another until the sanctuary is filled with light, the light of Christ. But when you're in the resistance, like I think we are this year, you have to learn to find ways around any and all obstacles. And we did that by creating a virtual candle service and having a few families do it at home and then asking you to light it at home and then having that magnificent uh, uh, silent night virtual choir singing to us. It was really quite remarkable. We're also doing that again next week. We'll be lighting candles as we always have done on Remembered Sunday to remember those people who have died in this past year. To let and remind ourselves that we never forget those who are beloved to us. And to let us remind ourselves that the darkness, that the darkness of death has been overcome by the resurrection of Christ. We'll also be lighting a candle to remember those people who have died of COVID-19 in this past year. Because the light of Christ is more powerful than this virus. Our scripture helps us with all this. It reminds us that the light of Christ has come into the world and the darkness has not overcome it. Today we are talking in heavenly, abstract, metaphysical concepts. But we're also alternating that in our scripture reading with earthly, ordinary realities of flesh and blood. We're talking about the pre-existent word that existed before all creation came. Something as abstract and mysterious as that. But then we also move and talk about the word becoming flesh in a real time, in a real place, in a real person. And we're talking about John the Baptist, the one who was the light, the one who gave witness to the coming light of Christ. Is this our way of saying that the gloom of our time is being overcome by a light that has come into the world. Well, uh, we could go really deep into this. I thought seriously of getting into the intricacies of this scripture and the, the abstractness and a little bit about the Greek and the Hebrew background to it. No, no, no. It is Christmas that we're just ending and epiphany we're beginning today. It's time for something, I think, a bit more spiritually nourishing for our souls. And the good news that I want to focus on in this message to you from these scriptures is very much this. The good news is that God has acted. God has not forgotten us. 
that God has come to us in the light of Christ, that in the word becoming flesh, that what has become flesh is the light of Christ, which is the light of God's truth and God's grace. And that light shines into the darkness and has the power to take the gloom away. It's a very powerful idea to say that the light is a light of truth and grace. The truth of Christ is the truth that overcomes all deception, all illusions that we live with. It reveals the nature, the true nature of things, the evil in the world, the brokenness of the world, the goodness of the world. It helps us to see things as they are. Now, you can imagine what it is like to have the light shone on you, you know? Sometimes you don't want to look at the flaws on your face. You've got the light too bright, right? Sometimes it looks better in the dark when you're feeling a little bit self-conscious. Imagine the light shining and revealing all things. That's what the light of Christ does. But it does with something else so important. It comes with grace. It says that that light is shown and those who prefer the darkness will run from it. But those who are willing to be in the light will be seen for who they are. But there's also grace and mercy in that light. The light does not come into the world to judge the world. For the world judges itself when it sees the light. And that is what our scripture is ultimately about. This shining of a light into the darkness of our world. Um, shining that light like we put that candle in the window as a resistance against the darkness. I like that idea. Resisting the darkness, resisting the gloom. This week in the story I read about in the New York Times, there is a couple that owns an organic farm up outside of Freeport, Maine. Much of what they have produced, Lisa and Ralph have been producing over the years has gone to supply the really nice restaurants in that area. And I've only a little bit going to individuals who come out to the farm to buy some of the produce. You can imagine what it is like to be a farmer with a small operation when almost all your crop goes to restaurants and now our restaurants are closing down or selling very little food. They frankly did not know how they were going to survive. They thought that the crop that they had growing they might just have to destroy because there would be no market for it. But Lisa, she got on the web and started sending out notices to every family and friends and those who would come to buy small amounts of their crop. She put it on social media and pretty soon friends were telling friends were telling friends and the little shop that they had to sell that produce found itself filling up with people. And all that produce they thought they would have to destroy, they discovered that now there was a market thanks to people who believed in what they were doing and wanted to support them in that difficult time. That is putting a light in the window as an act of resistance. I know when the, uh, the uh, government loans came out, the government grants came out to middle class people, all middle class people, you know, were able to receive these nice uh, bits of money that they could put to work and survive on for many people. I know some of our members told me that when they got that money, that they really didn't feel like they needed it like other people needed it. And so rather than keep it in their savings account where it wouldn't boost the economy or help anyone else out, they found things to give it to. I know one family gave a nice check to PADS. PADS, who has about three times the need that it has had before this crisis. Can you imagine how many people they're trying to find a hotel room because you can't have shelters? Or how many families now don't have a place to live because they can't pay the mortgage? Well, they decided to use that money as an act of protest, as a way of putting a light into the window against the encroachment of a darkness to overcome the gloom. I know in my own life, I found myself one day picking up a, a couple of meals uh, uh, for a couple of us at the house. We we're going to be having dinner, just the two of us. And we, uh, I went to a little restaurant downtown on Front Street that we really like a lot, a very small restaurant. When I went in there, uh, there was no one else in the restaurant but the owner and his chef. And he had my stuff prepared that pre-called it in. I was the only order he had. I gave him my credit card and paid over $20 for that meal. And I was about to leave and I was putting the credit card in my bill phone and I noticed there was a $10 bill. Only a $10 bill. 
And I pulled it out and I said, here's your tip. You can't believe the look of surprise on his face. He really was shocked. He said, oh, that's, that's very generous. And I simply said something I think all of you believe. We're in this together. And we need to support each other as best we can. And I like your place and I hope you do well. Put a light in the window as an act of resistance against the gloom. That's the opportunity we have this Christmas, to put that light in the window. All those who believe in Christ can dare to believe that the light has come into the world, knowing that we have no reason any longer to be afraid. We can come out and bask in the light of Christ because it is filled with truth, but it is also filled with grace. We can stand in that light knowing that we have nothing to fear. So put a candle in the window in these times and join the resistance. Amen. connection with each other, our bond with each other, according to our scripture today, is that we're children of God, and therefore we are brothers and sisters of one another. We are, as we often say in St. Matthew's, we are family to one another. And therefore, let us keep in mind those beloved people among us who have requested prayers. Um, we've been praying with Leslie Ortman and her family as she's in hospice. Um, she's I th very likely nearing the end in these days. Uh, and we pray with her. She says, no, it's going to be a lot of people feeling the, deeply the loss of, of Leslie and what she's meant to them. Uh, Jackie Tobin, who is much beloved in this church, moved several years ago down to St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, she is now in hospice at Cedarhurst in retirement home. There is in the uh, happenings this past week that she received, or in the church newsletter, I think it's also there, um, a way to reach and send her a letter. You can't call her, but you could send her a letter and she would welcome that. Uh, prayers also for Jen Fanning. We got word that she's going to have a colonoscopy tomorrow. And being older, she's anxious about that, as, as many of us are when we get to be older. Prayers for Mary Henderson and her family. Mary, ha now we just received yesterday news that she has COVID-19 and is at home. The family is going to be tested as well. Uh, she has symptoms. I don't know. I don't think they do at this time. Um, it comes at a really hard time. They're preparing to go down to Florida for the second time they've done this for Evelyn's surgery um, and would we'll be staying there several months. So we pray that she gets well and overcomes those symptoms as, and their family stays well. 
We also have Bill and Lee Staten who uh, have had COVID-19 too and been at home as well. We pray for their recovery. There's probably other people I don't know and I would have us all pray for all people who have that virus or who have had it. Prayers for our nation as we go through difficult transitions in leadership, as we try to get this uh, vaccine out and all the difficulties that are happening with that and uh, bring us together, Lord. Pray with me. One Father, Mother, God. We thank you for your presence <clears throat> during the hard and mean days, for then we have you to lean upon. Thank you for your presence during the bright and sunny days, for then we can share that which we have with those who have less. And thank you for your presence during the holy times, for then we are able to celebrate you and our family and our friends. For those who have no voice, we ask you to speak. For those who feel unworthy, we ask you to pour out your love in waterfalls of tenderness. For those who live in pain, we ask you to bathe them in the river of your healing. For those who are lonely, we ask you to keep them company. For those who are depressed, we ask you to shower upon them the light of hope. For the poor and the homeless and the forgotten, to whom life has been experienced as mean, we ask you to show mercy. Dear Creator, Mother and Father of us all, you are borderless in your love. You are a sea of substance. We ask you to give to all the world that which we most need this day, which is your peace. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to come now and to prepare uh, bread and juice uh, in your family to be able to receive the sacrament of the Lord this day. Come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because of any goodness that gives you a right to be here, but because you need mercy and you need help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would love to love, to lo love the Lord a lot. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Keeper of our days. We are grateful how you have revealed yourself to us. For in the fullness of time, you gave us your very own son, Jesus, born of Mary. In his actions and in his compassion and mercy, you have offered to the downtrodden the abundance of life. In his words, you have shown us the path of a compassionate way of living in community. In his death and resurrection, you have given us eternal life and promised a new world. And we remember a night in which he was to be betrayed, how he took the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And how after the cup he took, after the supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you, but also for many for the forgiveness of sins. And when you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Confident in your love and this first celebration of communion in this new year, O oh God, bring our whole selves to you in present, in your presence. Bring, we bring to you our achievements, our failures, our proud moments, our hidden shames, our undying dreams, and our detached resolve. All this gracious table is brought, we bring to this table, 
For it is here we meet you in this bread and in this cup, this cup of wine. Spirit of life, move upon this cup and upon this bread and make us mindful as that we are one with creation and one with you in this meal. And let it become to us the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may be the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus in the world. So the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in new life in Christ. The communion is ready. I invite you to receive. First, let us take the bread. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of blessing poured out for you. Let us give thanks for the gifts of God. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table. We have known the presence of Christ and we have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. into the peace of this good day. Go forth into the goodness of God's love. Bask yourself in the light that is the light of Christ, knowing that that light is filled with truth and also grace. And shine your light into the darkness that is in this world as an act of resistance. Amen. adore him Christ alone 